I didn't plan on running through my supplies so quickly. I'll have to get more before returning to the forest. Good morning, Miss Holiday. I hope I'm not bothering you. No, not at all. I was just on my way out. What brings you here? Well, I'm not supposed to be over here, but here you go. This is our report on the PAR incident. We never released those drawings, you know, for the family's sake. So if you could keep them under wraps. Thank you. This will help immensely. Sorry they aren't photos. Our department doesn't have a camera, so Sheriff Bowers makes me draw crime scenes. Now don't apologize. These are very detailed. Well, I'd better go. Sheriff's keeping a sharp eye on me. This information never made it to the newspapers, and I can see why. All of the victims had ritualistic markings on them. I've written down the characters that I've seen from Brody's sketch and included the two characters, Given and Er, from the pendant as Gaia gave to me. I'll keep adding any new symbols I find to this page. But what does this alphabet have to do with the Blair Witch or Rustin Parr? Well, the answer is here. I know it. I just have to find it. Perhaps if I tried some combinations similar to the Givner alignment. There is a large number three on the sketch. I'll start with combining three symbols. Nev a uh, given. Oh, where have I heard that? That's it. The deputy said Pa woke up at night screaming, never give in. Oh, but Pa wasn't saying never give in at all. He was saying never given. It does have something to do with the Tawana. It's just like the ones I saw in the forest and the one as Gaia gave me. I'll bet I can build my own Tawana in the shape of never given. Well, that's less spectacular than I'd hoped. Still, the stick figure does look just like Kyle's sketch. Doesn't feel like anything more than a bunch of sticks, though. Hmm, I suspect I'm still missing something. I wonder, could this thing possibly have a relationship to the odd structure I saw in the middle of the woods? I should show this to Esgaia. Police report on the Parr incident. Ah, the residue on this Arkatuana seems to be some sort of ectoplasm. It's like residue I've seen from encounters with cross-planar creatures, a side effect of moving through dimensions. If I'm going to learn how to use this thing, I'll have to find some way to reproduce this substance. I've put a bit of the Arka residue on each of the four metals. I need to combine three of the six tester chemicals to make a reagent. Next, I need to put a drop of the reagent on each of the metals. If I get an acidic reaction to occur on only one metal, then I can compare that to my chart and figure out what the mystery residue is. Oh, mysticism meets science. The primary component of our car is petroleum naphtha. Paint strippers usually contain petroleum naphtha. I should be able to find some in the general store.
Have you been to the woods? Did you uh, find what you were looking for? Not yet. Might I send another telegram? Same place as before? Yes, please. Whenever you're ready. Big flashlight almost dead. Stop. Mild lead poisoning. Stop. No doctor in town. Stop. Send remedy quickly. Stop. Love, Elspeth. Stop. Hmm. You feeling poorly? We can go to the sheriff's and call a doctor for you. No, that won't be necessary. My sister can send along a homemade remedy from our mother. Paint stripper. Hmm. I hope this will work. I'd like to purchase this. I'm not even going to ask. That's probably best. We don't need any more outsiders here in Burkittsville. been here before, in that dream. Even the window is shattered. Oh, hello there, young lady. I was so deep in prayer, I didn't hear you come in. I can return later if you're busy. Nonsense. God is eternal. He'll always be there when I return. But you're here now. You must be Elspeth Holliday. What can I do for you? Word gets around fast in this town. I'll say a prayer for your niece. I'd rather find an explanation in Burkittsville. After the Rustin Parr trial, I started wondering if maybe he... Oh, no. Not possible. Well, is there anything at all you can tell me about Parr? His is a lost soul. That's all? Where have you been? I thought it was burnt. Are you okay? Emily, you shouldn't talk to her. My mom says she's... No, wait! Hello? Hello? What's your name? Mary Brown. Shouldn't you be in school? Miss Ascot says home early today. She's not doing very well. Really? Why is that? She misses the other kids. Were they your friends? Not really. Just Kyle. But he's not the same anymore. Who were you talking to just now? Um, nobody. I was talking to myself. You look sad. I can't find Mr. Brownie. Mr. Brownie? He's been gone for a few days. What does he look like? He's brown. Uh, well, could you be more specific? Well, he's got soft fur. I'll keep an eye out for him. Bye now. How peculiar. I just met a local girl named Mary Brown. She was talking to someone, but there was no one else with her. She claimed she was talking to herself. But I swear she used the name Emily. Now, one of the girls that Rustin Parr killed was named Emily Hollins. I should review the recording of her conversation just to be sure. Also, she seems to have lost some sort of pet, a uh, Mr. Brownie. If I find it, I'll be sure to return it. What's going on? Somebody vandalized the school. Do you need some help? I've got it under control. This happened before, you know. But this time, I think it was just some kids pulling a prank. In fact, 
I believe the chalk this was drawn with came from my classroom. I can't imagine who would have the audacity to deface our school with such an infantile prank. <laughs> Kids, it's probably that Bowers boy. Thinks he runs the town, just like his father, the sheriff. Where are the children? Shouldn't you be in class? I sent them home. They don't need to see this. Well, I have to be going now. Do you have any books on Native American folklore? Well, I'm afraid I don't have much written by Native Americans. There is this book, though. An explorer wrote it during the early 1700s. He had Native American guides, and he wrote a lot about their beliefs and customs. Here you go. This book, The Ancient Evil of the New World, is supposedly non-fictional accounts of real-life legends from the Black Hills. I'll duplicate some of the more probable entries from the book into my field notes. They may prove to have no more substance than the rest. However, if some of these things are for real, I underestimated the magnitude of this mission. By the way, the Robin Weaver incident was mentioned in the book you loaned me. Since you were actually there, do you remember anything they might have missed? Well, there was one man that stands out in my mind. He came in right in the middle of everything. He had a massive wound on his head and claimed he had no memory. 
Robin Weaver's grandmother called him some biblical name. What was it? Oh, yes, Lazarus, like the man that was raised from the dead. I talked to him briefly, uh, skeptical of his intentions, you know, but I doubt he had anything to do with Robin's disappearance. He was pretty keen on finding her. What happened to him? Uh, I'm not sure. Just sort of disappeared. <laughs> Maybe the witch got him. Did a parcel arrive for me? No, ma'am. Can't say that it has. Hope you get to feeling better, Miss Holiday. Oh, Justine! Hey, brought those remedies you needed. Why didn't Spookhouse just send a courier? <laughs> Can't have this stuff falling into enemy hands. Well, I'm happy to see you. Come on, it's the last room on the end. You did bring my ECRE pistol, didn't you? Right here. Had a chance to test the rifle yet? Oh, too many times, but it works quite well. I wasn't sure how badly you were needing it, so I brought two of your modified batteries to give your big gun some extra power. Fabulous. I underestimated this mission when I left. Thank you so much for coming, Justine. You need anything else? No, I have it under control. Thanks. If things get any worse, I'll call in the stranger. Now you better get going. I have a lot more work to do. Thanks again, Justine. I'm ready to go into the woods now. I'd better take my gear with me. Stranger, where are you? I need you here. Stranger? That was my voice, but I've never said that. Upon analyzing the recording, I can definitely make out a voice that appears to be my own. In a great deal of fear, what's disconcerting is that I know I haven't said those words. Is this some sort of trick? And it can't hurt to play it again and see if I missed anything. Stranger, where are you? I need you here. Stranger? Hold on, there's another voice here. Can't quite make it out. Ozma is real. Ozma is real? After further analysis of the recording, I'm able to hear another voice, a woman's voice, completely unfamiliar to me. The voice says a phrase, Ozma is real. Unfortunately, it sounds as if there's another syllable at the beginning that I cannot decipher. I should make a note of this for later investigation. It's cold. 
Hold still, Mary. Where have you been? At his house. I thought it was burnt. Not, Not if the sticks are laid right. Are you okay? She's coming with new sticks. She can free me. Emily, you shouldn't talk to her. My mom says she... Shh, somebody's coming. I have to go. No, wait! It's cold still, Mary. Where have you been? At his house. I thought it was burnt. Not if the sticks are laid right. Are you okay? She's coming with new sticks. She can free me. Emily, you shouldn't talk to her. My mom says she... Shh, somebody's coming. I have to go. No, wait! With the proper adjustments, the recording of Mary Brown clearly contains another girl's voice. I can only assume that Emily is a spiritual manifestation of Emily Hollins, Pa's first victim. There's no question that Mary Brown is very special. I'm ready to go into the woods now. I better take my gear with me. I just got off the phone with the Sheriff of Martinsburg. An old chum of yours? He's never heard of you. Didn't you say you talked to him before coming here? No one's gone missing from Martinsburg since 34. Oh, you don't say. I'll have to tell that to my sister. Now, you haven't done anything illegal, as far as I can tell. But I got my eye on you. You step out of line, you're mine. You get me, little lady? Thank you, Sheriff. I appreciate your concern. Blast! The local sheriff knows my cover story is bogus. He could stir up some serious trouble if he wanted to. I should try to keep my distance. Did you hear? About what? I just got a phone call. The judge wasn't on vacation. He was murdered. And they found the body at the general store. Sheriff Bowers just arrested Daniel Cole. I'm heading over to find out more. Suzanne Askett just informed me that Rustin Pa's judge was murdered. Daniel Cole, the shopkeeper, has been arrested. I don't know if this has anything to do with Rust and Pa, but it's almost too great a coincidence to ignore. I get the feeling that something even larger is at work here. wasn't supposed to happen. All could have been prevented. All my fault. Can you believe it? This story just gets darker and darker. What happened? We got worried when we still hadn't heard from the judge. We searched his place, and it was obvious he hadn't packed for a vacation. We found evidence pointing us here. The body was in Cole's storage room, stuffed in a sack of potatoes. What did Cole say? Says he didn't do it. Claims somebody else put the body in there. Do you believe him? I don't know. Right now, I'm just glad he's not telling me an old woman ghost made him do it. Sorry, Miss Holiday. Can't let you in. Sheriff's in there. 